Hello all viewers and all aspirants. Welcome back to the channel. We really appreciate you for hanging around and believing in us in our tough time. So thank you so much to all of you. My name is Devashish and this is an Eight Sharpner production. Illustration that you will see is made by Rashmi. This video is all about a very popular topic in almost all exams, the relative velocity. There are many misconceptions in many students' heads regarding relative velocity. Physics is all about how you observe the world around you and examiners love to create problems on that. So we shall first see what the relative velocity actually means and how the problems are made. Most popular of them are about a train and a pole, a train and a platform, two moving trains parallelly in the same direction or in opposite direction and a moving train and a car. But let's first understand what relative velocity is. Generally, when we talk about velocity or say any other physical quantity, there is always an observer who is considered at rest, who is outside the system. Everything else moves with respect to this observer. So if body A moves with respect to body B with 5 meter per second, that's what is seen by the observer. But if we now put the observer in body B, and body B moves, things change. Now we are asked what is the velocity of A with respect to velocity of B. So if body A is moving in this direction with 5 meter per second and body B is moving in the opposite direction with say 2 meter per second, so body B would see A approaching even quicker. So the relative velocity of A would be 5 plus 2 which is 7 meter per second with respect to B. Now what happens if body A is moving in the right and if body B is also moving in the right with the same magnitudes 5 meter per second and 2 meter per second. So what happens is body B would feel like the body A is moving slower than the actual speed of it. So the relative velocity would be 5 meter per second minus 2 meter per second which gives 3 meters per second. So this is how the relative velocity actually works. There are different problems with a train and a pole. So what happens in this case? If a train is moving with respect to a pole, say with 25 meter per second, and the problem is in how much time would the train cross the pole completely if the length of train is 200 meters. The simple formula that we always have is distance upon time which is distance upon time giving the velocity. The thing to remember here is the velocity in this case is a relative velocity. But in this case a pole is another object. The pole is stationary. So relative velocity is nothing but the velocity of the train with respect to pole which is the actual velocity of the train. So now we have the length of train as 200 meters and the time taken by the pole to cross the train or train to cross the pole would be given by distance divided by the velocity of the train which is given as 25 meter per second. So it comes out to be 8 seconds. This is a very basic model to see the distance upon time equal to relative velocity formula. We will see how the complex problems boil down to this particular concept as we go along. So this is how a train moves with respect to the pole. Let's see another example where we have a stationary platform and a train moving with respect to it. Now we want to find out in how much time would the train cross the given platform if the train is moving with 25 meter per second and the length of platform is 300 meters. So now instead of a pole we have the platform of length k. So the same formula applies the distance divided by the velocity giving time. So here also the velocity is a relative velocity of the train with respect to the platform and as platform is stationary the velocity or the relative velocity is the same which is 25 meter per second. Now the distance is nothing but the length of the train plus the length of the platform so which is 200 plus 300 meters divided by the velocity or 25 meter per second giving the answer as 20 seconds. So 
the time taken by the train to cross the platform would be large as the length of platform is larger. So this is how a complex problem would boil down to this concept. Now let us see a complicated problem with two trains moving with respect to each other. So we have two lengths L1 and L2 for two trains, train 1 and train 2. Let us say train 1 is moving with respect to train 2 but the individual speeds are given as 25 meter per second for T1 and 15 meters per second for T2. Now for the first case, let us assume both the trains are going in opposite direction to each other. So if the observer is in train 2, he would see the train moving quicker. So this is how the train will move. Now our objective is to find out in how much time would the train T1 cross train T2. The total distance will be given by L1 plus L2, which are the lengths of the two trains. Let us say L1 is 200 meters and the L2 is 250 meters. So now distance divided by the relative velocity would give us the time taken to cross the length of T2 by T1. Now how would you find relative velocity in this case? Now this is an important case, we have the V1 for this train as 25 meter per second which is moving in the right hand direction. We have V2 as 15 meter per second which is moving in the opposite direction. The sign convention that applies is for the velocities to the right we consider positive and for the velocities which are on the left hand side, we consider them negative. The formula for the relative velocity is for the velocity of object 1 with respect to 2 is given by v1 minus v2 vectors. The vectors here are horizontal, so there is no angle between them, both the velocities are parallel. So we will just put the magnitudes, in this case v1 is in the right so we will take it positive which is 25 meter per second minus the v2 vector is the negative with magnitude 15 meter per second which gives 40 meters per second. So the speed of t1 is larger than the original speed of it when we consider the relative velocity of it. So the total length is 200 plus 250 divided by the total speed or the relative velocity which is 450 divided by 40 giving 11.25 seconds. So the time taken by train T1 to cross the length of T2 is 11.25 seconds. Remember how we calculated the relative velocity in this case. Let us take another example where the two trains are going in the same way. So if the observer is in train 2, he will see the speed of T1 a little slower than the original. We take the similar example where the V1 is 25 meter per second and V2 is 15 meter per second. The length L2 is 250 meters and L1 is 200 meters. Now we want to calculate the time taken by T1 to cross T2. Again we will apply distance divided by relative velocity giving time this formula. Now our aim is to calculate the relative velocity. We will, we will calculate v1 minus v2 now. Again v1 is in the right hand direction and v2 is also in the right hand direction. We are considering that both the trains are going in the same way towards right. So v1 is 25 meter per second and v2 is 15 meter per second. We consider the observer is in train T2, so we take v1 minus v2. If the observer was in train T1, we would have considered v2 minus v1. But in this case, the observer is in train T2, so we have 25 minus 15, which gives 10 meter per second. So the relative velocity in this case is 10 meters per second.
the total distance is L1 plus L2 which is 200 plus 250 meters divided by the relative velocity which came out to be 10 meters per second and hence the total time taken to cross the length of T2 by T1 is 45 seconds. This is how we boil down this problem to a stationary platform problem if we consider the relative velocity. Once we take the relative velocity, we should make the object where the observer is stationary. So now let us see another kind of a problem wherein we consider a train and a car. We are interested in finding out the relative velocity of the car with respect to train or relative velocity of train with respect to car. Let us say the car is moving to the left with 10 meters per second and if the car crosses the train in 8 seconds, find out the speed of train which is moving to the right, assuming the length of train as 200 meters. So now in this case we can consider this as a problem of a platform with zero length. Now car is also moving, so we have to calculate the relative velocity of the car with respect to train. Let us say the velocity of the train towards right is vt and velocity of car to the left is vc. As they are moving in different directions, the relative velocity would be vt minus vc and vc is given as 10 meters per second but to the left. So that would be vt minus minus of 10 that would give vt plus 10 meter per second. So this is the relative velocity that we have. Now our objective is to find out the length upon time giving velocity. So the total length is nothing but the length of the train which is 200 meters divided by the time taken by the car to cross the train which is 8 seconds giving the relative velocity of the train with respect to car which is nothing but vt plus 10. Now if we solve this we get 25 equals vt plus 10. To find out vt now it's very simple 25 minus 10 giving 15 meters per second. So for the observer who is outside of the car and also the train if this is the observer the observer would see the original speed vt equals to 15 meter per second. Because of the relative velocity which is vt plus 10 the velocity of the train with respect to car is vt plus 10 which is equal to 25 meter per second. So this is how we solve the problems regarding the relative velocity. To summarize this sign convention is important. We assume that the left is negative, the right is positive, up is positive and down is negative. Also the relative velocity is given as v1 minus v2 where it is read as velocity of object 1 with respect to 2. So observer is an object too. Poles, trees, cars and bikes have zero length as compared to the train. And the last thing to remember is that the simple expression that will always apply is displacement equals time into velocity where this velocity that you see is a relative velocity. Thank you again for all the support and we shall continue putting lots of videos which will be useful for you in different examinations. More problems on this topic would be covered in another video. Please leave your feedbacks in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video to help more students. We will see you soon in another video. Tab tak ke liye gyan pite rahiye.